Hello and welcome to the CryptoSec Ed YouTube channel. I'm Thomas. Uh, in this channel, I'm going to discuss various different topics in cybersecurity, specifically uh, those related to cryptography. Uh, any uh, topic I uh, have come across in my many years of teaching that I think is uh, might be interesting and helpful to people to understand the area. Uh, the first topic I want to talk about is uh, modes of operations for block ciphers. If you've gone to the YouTube, uh, the Wikipedia page uh, for block cipher modes of operation, uh, you will probably have seen uh, several different uh, charts and images, and you might be familiar with this um, image of a penguin that is encrypted in two different types of modes. So we've got the original penguin here, we've got ECB and uh, another mode looking completely random. So ECB is the obvious way to encrypt data. You split the data up into a number of different blocks. You encrypt each block separately and that is your ciphertext. And for decryption, it's the exact same, just in reverse. You split the ciphertext up into blocks, decrypt them, uh, and then you get your plain text back. And this is saying, uh, if you've got a original plain text file that has a lot of structure, a lot of repetition, a lot of patterns in the blocks, then those patterns and um, um, any of those statistics, those will be reflected in the ciphertext, which is not something you want. You don't want information leaking out uh, in the, the ciphertext. And this is, this is a true message, this is very important, um, but there's a lot uh, that's uh, missing in this statement uh, that is not very clear. If you want to try to implement this yourself, then you're going to run into a lot of difficulties. So first of all, this is our original uh, plain text file, um, tux.svg. Um, SVG is a uh, vector graphics file format. Um, which is important. If you uh, look at the file in a text editor, uh, sorry, in a, a hex editor, uh, what you'll see it is actually mainly text. It's an XML file and it, it uses this file to store uh, information about the shapes in the image. So it uses a lot of uh, lines and curves in order to um, uh, contain the information in the file and it doesn't actually save bit by bit what pixel is in each position of the file. The whole point of this exercise in trying to show how harmful uh, ECB can be is that you're taking a file that represents each pixel uh, of data in a set number of bits and repeated um, colors will rep be represented by repeated bits in the original file. And you don't get that with SVG. So taking an SGV file and encrypting it will not give you this. And it does actually explicitly say, um, if you want to try to do this, you need to encrypt a bitmap image. Um, so we can um, take care of that. We can open this SVG file in a editor that will allow us to export into bitmaps. So I'm going to use um, uh, GIMP uh, to uh, export that file and um, I can just open it here and it's okay so with a little um, work we can um, export this as a bitmap BMP and I'm going to uh, adjust some of these options. I'm going to use 24 bits um, as that is tends to be uh, the standard. And when we're done, we now have a, uh, a bitmap image. Let me just zoom in there a little, make that bigger. So this is our, our plain text image and this is a bitmap. And if we look at the um, this this bitmap in a hex editor we will see uh, okay now there's lots of repeated um, bytes in the hex uh, a lot of uh, the same uh, characters appearing repeated many many times uh, and this represents 
uh, the same color uh, along uh, a number of sequential pixels in the original image. So there's lots of patterns, lots of rep repetition in the uh, in the plain text uh, file. So if I do want to do some very simple encryption of this um, tux.bmp, I can use OpenSSL uh, command line. Uh, I can use AES128 ECB. Um, doesn't really make a huge difference if you're using 256 or 128. Um, those just change the key size. The block size is the far more important parameter here. I'm going to specify all zeros for the key. Uh, I'm going to use minus P just to display all the um, the um, keys that are actually used uh, in the encryption. I need to specify the input file. I want to make sure that's the, the bitmap. And I'm going to save this as tux.ecb.bmp. Um, oh yeah, it's telling me um, the key was too short, so I had to pad it so it's an appropriate length key. But this has now encrypted this image um, and we've got the ciphertext file here. So if I open this, um, this will show uh, an error message. Um, here we go. Uh, unknown file format, empty damage file or file not found. And what that's um, telling us is that it's not recognizing this as a bitmap file. It's not enough for a file just to have the BMP extension for it to be automatically opened as an image. There's a lot of metadata uh, at the st start of the file to signify that it is to allow the image viewer to process it as a bitmap. And that's not present, that's all been encrypted. Um, so if we have a look at the encrypted file in the uh, hex editor, we can see all of this is uh, encrypted and modified, and um, so we cannot view it as a bitmap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this file. Uh, copy here. I'm going to rename it um, uh, tux.ecbpart.bnp. I'm going to open it in the text editor as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first block of the plain text file and overwrite the corresponding block of the ciphertext file. Uh, so uh, in AES, the block sizes are 128 bits, that's 16 bytes. And in this hex editor, each line corresponds to 16 bytes. So every single pair of characters here is uh, a byte. It's two hex characters, each hex character is four bits. So we've got um, uh, a nice setup here where each line represents uh, an AES block, 128 bits. Um, so now that I've uh, restored just the first block of the plaintext file, I can try and open that image. And it's saying still not a valid uh, bitmap file. Uh, so let's try the first uh, two blocks of the original image. I'm just going to overwrite those there. And if I open that, Yes, we can see this is opened as a bitmap image. Again, this if you were to go deeper into the actual structure of the bitmap file, you would um, know a little bit more about what exactly is needed to um, uh, recover, uh, to open up a, to, to re reproduce the header of the original file to get a valid bitmap, but we're just copying over multiple blocks till we get something that opens up. So here we have uh, an encryption of the original file. This is the original one. We don't get everything back, so there's a lot of um, sections that are unclear, uh, especially around the eyes, the smile, none of that has been reproduced. But the general shape, the general outline, we can see uh, the body of the penguin, we can make out basic legs here, or feet rather, um, parts of the head are visible. There's a general impression of the image. Uh, this is not nearly enough to completely recover uh, the image, but this is certainly very concerning if you knew that um, this is what the encrypted file essentially looked at from, from an attacker's point of view. You would think, no, this isn't covering all the information. This is not completely hiding everything. This is not an adequate way to encrypt. Uh, if I then just encrypt this file again with uh, CBC mode and 
Um, I'm gonna need to specify the IV as well. Um, then I can get uh, a um, another uh, encrypted file. I'm gonna to have to do the same thing again if we want to view this as a uh, an image. So open it in the hex editor. Again, copy the first two bytes, sorry, two blocks of the plain text file. Save it in the encrypted file. Um, and um, I've made a mistake. Yes, I've changed the output file name. I forgot to change the actual command to encrypt it. Um, so there we go. Um, key and IV are specified there. Uh, CBC encrypted file. Um, copy the two blocks from the plain text. Save that. And now when we open this second file, uh, we can see, well, it's entirely gibberish. There's no discernible patterns from this file. We are a little bit more confident that this file is encrypting. It's hiding all the information, uh, the repeated information of the blocks from the plaintext file in the ciphertext file. Um, so that's a little bit more uh, of the details on how you can go from this to this and this to this in practice. Um, but the message is clear. ECB is not secure. Do not use ECB in any situation where you want to hide information about the plaintext file. Um, the wrong message to take away from this would be to avoid using bitmaps, uh, avoid using file types that have structure and patterns across different blocks. That is a, a very um, um, risky approach to take. You don't want to rely on the the randomness and the um, the unpredictability of the plaintext itself. You want an encryption system that will work no matter how regular and repeated the data is. It's always going to be safely encrypted. And the alternative I used here was CBC. I should mention CBC is not generally considered the the most secure block cipher mode. Um, in the uh, the page, the first mode that is that is listed is GCM. And that is considered a very secure, very reliable. Uh, mode of operation for block ciphers. But um, the reason why you would use GCM over CBC is another story, a longer message, something I might cover in a future video. Uh, okay, that's all for uh, this video. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please um, add them in the comments at the bottom. I will add a link to a GitHub repository where I have some of these uh, images and commands uh, where you can check uh, if you want to try this uh, yourself.